Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. Today's video, we're gonna be modifying the exhaust on the 1LE. We've got some things that I needed to fix, but while I'm fixing it, I'm just gonna take care of some other problems and see if we can't free up maybe a little bit of horsepower and maybe gain a little bit more noise. All right, so on the other side that I've already mo removed, uh, one of the problems was MBRP didn't make their exhaust big enough to go over top and slip fit over top of the factory exhaust here. Therefore, I just had to kind of butt them to each other and weld them, but I couldn't weld them off of the car. So basically I had an exhaust leak like up top here. So we want to go ahead and 360 degree weld that, but we also want to be able to get this exhaust on and off of the car more easily. So what better way to do that is then to put in a better style of clamp in here. And basically we're going to go ahead and make a set of test pipes so we can get rid of these secondary catalytic converters. Now it's not going to hurt anything on the car because this is the main catalytic converter here. So you've got an O2 sensor right before the cat and you've got an O2 sensor right after. But this secondary cat means absolutely nothing because it has no monitoring or anything behind it. So it doesn't matter if these things are here or not. The only thing that these things, uh, I think my tuner warned me about is if you do open up an exhaust system on a supercharged car, I guess you can lose a little bit of boost. So you could maybe get a drop in horsepower, but if you were to tune a fully uh, decatted car, you could obviously make some of that horsepower back within the tune itself. So I'm not exactly sure if we're gonna lose horsepower or make horsepower by making this more free flowing. Uh, on a turbocharged car, I know that if you open up the exhaust system, you'll actually gain horsepower because you'll actually get more boost spikes. You actually have to tell the wastegate to uh, lower its wastegate duty cycle on some of the RPMs because when that exhaust flows out of that turbo faster, the turbo can spool up faster and you can get boost spike. So you have to tune that out. But something with a supercharger, he warned me that I may end up losing a little bit. And right now we're pushing about 590 horse to the wheels uh, on the factory tune with just a capac exhaust and a cold air intake. So I don't really wanna lose more than 590, but uh, we will be gaining a little bit of sound probably. And let me at least show you what we're dealing with uh, catalytic converter wise. So hopefully you guys can see inside of there, but that main catalytic converter is obviously very, very restrictive. Those holes are very, very tiny. So that's definitely gonna be holding back some noise and some horsepower. But the secondary cats, uh, they're a lot bigger. They're way more open. And while it still may hinder a little bit of horsepower and a little bit of sound, these are more like racing cats than the primaries that are more like factory cats. But either way, I think getting rid of that is gonna save the car a little bit from retaining heat in some sections because they do, uh, they triple insulate this thing. They've got a heat shield right here. They've got a heat shield right here and even all the way back up in there. They've got some like fiberglass glued on heat shield right there too. So clearly heat is a problem. And if we can go ahead and delete all this, it's not gonna be like a resident of heat uh, holding all of that in. And again, I just wanna free up the system a little bit and gain some sound. Now, the game plan is here. We cut this guy off very crudely because there's absolutely no space in here. In fact, I nicked the heat shield right here and I nicked this heat shield right here, but I tore this open because there's some lines back there and I wanna make sure that I didn't hurt those lines and I didn't. So we're gonna to have to get some heat reflective tape and just kind of tape those up and make it look a little bit prettier under here. But luckily the factory exhaust opens up to three inches. So we cut it right behind the weld on where the, it opens up to three inches. So we've got three inch pipe that we can accept onto this three inch right here. We just need to go to an exhaust shop and have them open it up a little bit so I can just barely slip it on and then we can weld it. And then obviously this little guy right here just unbolts. So real easy to weld that 360 degrees. This side is more of the pain in the butt because it's got a donut style clamp 
and these are impossible to get off because not only are they kind of like crushed fitted around each other, but you actually have to be able to pull the exhaust back a little bit to like separate the two sections. So it's a huge pain in the butt. And I don't want to have an exhaust system that's hard to take on and off. So I bought some three inch clamps that are going to be two bolt design, just like this guy right here. But instead of having like welded in studs, you actually just slip in a bolt and put a nut on the other side. And if you ever want to remove it, you just take the two apart and then they're fully separated from each other. So we can remove this section a hell of a lot easier in the future. And then last, I also don't like the design that we're going from like two and a half up to three inches. We're going through this huge cat. Then we're going back to two and a half. Then we're going back up to three inches. So I don't like how we're just basically going up and down on exhaust sizes. So right behind this weld, again, when this two and a half opens up to three inch, we're gonna be going basically from this section now from three inch all the way through three inch. And luckily the MBRP on this side right here, this pipe can actually fit in to my three inch pipe. So we'll actually be able to just slip this guy over and again, take this section off here, 360 weld it. And then again, cut this in half and we'll be putting in two mounting plate or uh, two two bolt flanges. So we'll be able to take this off just a heck of a lot easier. And hopefully uh, this donut comes off again so I don't have to remove any of the main cats. I can just unbolt this and take off both of these little sections here and we'll be able to weld our three inch pipe on. But again, all of these clamp on styles are a pain in the butt because once the clamps are on, they basically kind of pinch the pipe ever so slightly and then you can't pull it off. But I uh, went and got a set of uh, dead blow hammers so that we don't hurt the exhaust pipe. And luckily with that almost 90 degree turn on there, once we loosen those up, we kind of just hit it off there and kind of pull it out. And it was at least able to at least come off of this side. So we're 50% done. So wish me luck on these other two cuts over here. And then I'll head to an exhaust shop. We'll flare the mouth open a little bit to get over top of these pipes, weld them up. And then I am still waiting on the uh, four two bolt flanges to show up. So we'll be able to finish it today, but well, unless they show up today, cause it's like seven in the morning. And then we'll start mocking it up and see where we're gonna go from there. That does not feel good on my arm when that jumps. But ow, when that thing catches and jumps, I'm still only seven days out uh, from a broken arm. So I get a nice little jolt down through my forearm there. That does not feel good. Okay, so this one, a lot easier, a lot more flexibility. So let's uh, loosen this clamp up and let's see if we can't dead blow this entire thing off. And then again, this entire cat section here could just pop out and then our new three inch section could just go right over top of this and we can 360 degree weld it. And then we don't have to worry about any more of these leaks. And these leaks do suck because they end up rusting the pipe and as you can see, you get water leaking down through here and water runs all the way down. It ends up staining and it ends up hurting this aluminized cheaper metal, but uh, aluminized is a lot cheaper than having a full stainless steel exhaust. But at least for now, I think the, uh, the hard part is actually over. crap look how small the factory is in here i said two and a half but that's probably only two inches right there so just in this short period of time where that slips over top of that we're going from like two inches all the way up to three inches so hopefully that'll be a lot better for flow and again not have to worrying about any of that like dipping and stuff and this is what we wanted to fix anyway with actually doing all this again mbrp didn't flare this out so this is kind of just butted up in here but I was able to get a weld up to here and a weld up to here, but I wasn't able to weld the uh, very top side here. So I want to get this 360 degree welded so that we don't have any more leaks or anything popping out of here. And then this will be a lot tighter and uh, more whole of a system. Told you this guy would come in handy. <laughs> so right now we've got it slit fit on the driver's side back in and I can see my markings. I'm exactly where I was. 
Uh, again, I still want to kind of take the entire exhaust off and weld up all of these and make this an entire one system, but I may do that another day because I do not have the strength to be uh, holding the exhaust up while I'm pulling everything off of the hanger because this arm, again, still just does not work. But we've got this side basically where it's going to go in the car. I've got this three inch piece of pipe right here. Now, the good thing is, is we do have uh, some movement in here. So because these two pipes basically are not lined up at all, we basically, like if I was stuck in like that, we're facing off completely to the driver's side and not equal to this at all. So we kind of have to pull this off just a little bit and then we just kind of pull it in and boom. Now it's 100% facing that pipe right there. So we'll have to put a tack weld back here to get this thing in place and to hold it. And then once that's tack welded on, we can go ahead and slip this off again. 360 degree weld this. And then once our exhaust clamps show up, we'll just cut this pipe here. And this pipe here, I decided to eliminate the donut gasket just because it's a piece of crap. But we can slip this back on and in any location that we want because it's a very tight fit from the factory. We can either weld right here where the donut gasket's supposed to go or we can slide it off a little bit all the way back out to here. And again, we have movement to change the angle to get it right. And then again, we can tack weld this, tack weld that, uh, two bolt flange right here in the middle that will cut that pipe to weld those in. And then this side is actually gonna be really simple and easy to complete. So just tape these two pieces of pipe together and tape the, uh, the flare out factory piece to this piece. Right here is where I'm gonna put my two uh, bolt flange. So this piece right here, because it slips all the way back to here, I can take this off now with the tape and slide it back and I can get this pipe out. But we just have to tack this guy up right here, take it off, 360 degree weld it, and then this guy's ready to go. Just need to wait on the uh, two bolt flange, two bolt flange, and then we'll tack weld this guy on when we're ready, weld up both of the flanges, and then we do again have to take this cap all the way off so that we can get all the way on this factory pipe, 360 degree welded. But that looks uh, a lot better. As you can see, it's now basically completely straight. I again think this side is the easy side. This side's gonna be just a hair bit more tricky. That's the only thing that sucks is having to close up these uh, pinch welds where MBRP kind of flared them or uh, put slits in them so they could either close down or open up. I gotta basically fill all of them gaps now, which I don't particularly like doing without some sort of metal filler. All right guys, all done. Definitely ain't gonna win a beauty contest. But again, I am not good at uh, welding round pipe and especially where those cracks were going down. It looks like crap and no one's going to know that those cracks were actually there. But that's why the welds are so fat in some areas. But we'll just spray it down with some high temp exhaust paint. Help with rusting and stuff. And again, until we get that two bolt flange, at least for now, this side of the car is done. Well, I got tired of waiting on the exhaust shop, so ixnay on them. I actually just took this piece of pipe out to the barn and uh, put it in a bench vise and put a metal pipe in it and just kind of like walked it around and ended up flaring it. So now we're flared out a little bit. We're sticking into here. We're pretty much lined up, ready to go to cut this pipe in half again to put an exhaust uh, two bolt flange. And I've got enough gap in between this pipe and this pipe, which does suck. This pipe has a reduced size now. So we're going from like three inch down to like two and a half, back up to three and a half. But uh, I don't know if I have enough pipe to basically hack this off and get uh, this section kind of welded up, but probably not any amount of horsepower that you'll ever see uh, that would hinder this. But uh, I'm gonna tack this up right now and we can take it outside, fully weld it. We still need to weld the top of this guy. And then again, we're just waiting on the exhaust flanges to cut these both in half. And then we'll be able to bolt this guy up and then freaking be done. And I cannot wait to hear it.
All right, guys, so the uh, two bolt flanges actually just showed up with the post office and I didn't think they were gonna show up today. So we can get this guy finished up today. So this side is looking great. Uh, these two bolt flanges, uh, they're three inches internal diameter, or actually they're bigger than three inches internal because the uh, aftermarket pipe can slide right into them and it's actually a very tight fit. The factory pipe has just an ever so uh, small amount of play, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and get that all welded up. But this side is looking good. The only thing that I made a mistake on was I did each side individually. And when I put them together, they were hitting each other right here in the middle. So I had to do two things. One, I had to bust out a big old hammer and give some love taps right on this 90 degree bend just to dent them in ever so slightly. And that does not affect horsepower or anything like that. The factory exhaust was completely smashed in 10 times more. And again, if you actually go watch a uh, video on YouTube, it's just a couple years old, but they put a uh, V8 naturally aspirated on a dyno and were pretending uh, to be if like something was in the way, they were smashing headers. Every time they smashed the headers on both sides, the thing actually ended up gaining horsepower. So to have a little bit of dent here in the middle, I am not afraid at all that this thing's gonna lose power because of that. But to get these things better aligned along with the denting, what I did was on certain spots on some of these, I ended up cutting down in like a relief cut. So like around a bend, if you cut all the way through the pipe, almost all the way out the back side, the thickness of your blade, especially if you go down like once or twice, you actually take the pipe and bend it back onto itself, which makes that radius close up a little bit. So you still have your like mandrel bent pipe. You're just not having a mandrel bender. You're just putting a relief cut in there, bending the pipe back on itself, tack welding it in place, and now you have a new radius bend. So I had to basically cut this factory pipe right here and push it out further this way so that we could take this entire pipe and push it more towards this way so that we're not hitting this pipe as much. But this one is ready to be tacked up right now. I'm gonna play around with this side a little bit more and uh, get it to not hang so low and to get a better positioning of it and stuff. And then we'll do the exact same over here put on the flange and I've already got uh, this flange welded up. So this is the factory donut that we can slide back on that pipe and then we'll have to tack weld this to the OEM pipe. But this guy has a little bit of room that it can be oriented up or down or left or right to kind of face this pipe up over here. So we're a little bit more uh, lined up with it. And then again, we've got plenty of movement in here still. So, all right guys, last piece of the puzzle. This side fit pretty good. This side, one thing that I did have to modify, uh, I could not get the catalytic converter off with the way my arm is. There is one bolt all the way up in there, right on the other side of the O2 sensor that basically I just couldn't get to. And I don't have the strength to move everything around to be able to like pull out that O2 sensor and to get my hand up in there and to actually get like a 15 millimeter uh, socket or wrench on there, like a short little stubby guy to actually get that thing to come off. So. I welded this guy up uh, all the way up as high as I could go, kind of like the same problem we had over here before, but because this is only two inch pipe, it's a lot easier to get the welding to start all the way up top on each side. But just to be sure, I put the donut gaskets like inner ring around there, and then I cinched it down with a three inch clamp and it actually fits very tight. So if there is some micro leaks out of there, the leaks can't just shoot straight out and like hit stuff. They have to like hit this inner donut gasket first or hit the exhaust clamp and then kind of like shoot out to the side. But there's probably only like a pinhole, maybe one or two that's actually on there. But that clamp there again is just kind of like a diverter slash uh, extra heat shield on there. But I'm gonna cinch this guy up, get it set to where I want, and then we can lower the car and we can fire this thing up. All right, everybody, moment of truth. Uh, my vote, and I'll go back and play an old cold startup clip for you guys. My vote is it's not gonna be any louder really on cold startup, but I can guarantee out on the road, we're gonna get a hell of a lot more crackles and pops. But cold startup, I bet it's still gonna be just astronomically loud but I don't think it's gonna be any more crazy loud than it was before with just the uh, four cats total.
definitely louder on cold startup. We are definitely going to get more crack with some pops out on the street. Let me get inside real quick, just give it a few revs and see how that sounds. Oh, uh, that is way different. You can definitely hear that thing just go, 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 go. Almost like it does have a cam. Alright, scratch that. It won't let me rev it really. We'll warm it up and then we'll take it out on the street. I gotta check the tire pressures because the racing slicks, uh, one of them still has like a micro leak somewhere and it's always slow when I let it sit for too long. So, but that definitely, definitely 100% sounds different. A lot more throaty and just a lot more. That's cool, that's crazy. Oh yeah, duh. We might as well check for uh, some exhaust leaks. It's smoking because of the paint that I put on it. Sweet. I actually can't feel anything. But man, that's a lot of noise that you can hear coming up in these catalytic converters. Or even up there in the motor. All right, everybody, so we're out warming the car up. Uh, oil is up to temperature, but the transmission takes some time. Uh, just coming off of my road, coming to the stop sign, there is definitely more crackles and pops. In fifth gear, barely going that fast at all with a little bit of a downshift. Holy crap, there's more. Yeah, so, I, I mean, it's not that loud in here, but I think factory-wise, this car actually does pretty good with, like, sound deadening materials and stuff. I don't think the noise, vibration, and hardness is actually that bad on a 1LE. But I know there's people out there that cry all the time that it's too harsh, it hurts my back, blah, blah, blah. It feels fine to me, and I don't think I have that great of a back. Red light. When it hits and it pops and grabs and throws you back in your seat just like you were hammering through manual, ah, a regular torque converter automatic transmission just does not do the same thing. I'll have another AMG one day, I promise you that. This thing is no slouch, even if it is slightly, slightly down on power. Alright everybody, well thanks for stopping by again, another video on the 1LE. Uh, again, hopefully once my arm heals I'll be able to do more with the house. That's even hard just driving and trying to turn with one arm. Uh, this one basically just does not move if I'm trying to like twist and everything. So, But I gotta get inside real quick because they're spraying the fields and it smells like freaking nail polish or something, some chemical that they're doing. It's probably gonna end up killing me. But uh, again, thanks for stopping by. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.